I'd like to begin to, by acknowledging the Ngunnawal people, traditional custodians of the land on which I am presenting today, and pay my respects to their elders past and present. I extend that respect to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders, uh, Islander peoples who may be listening today either here or virtually. Hello everyone, my name is Kate Yaxley and I am the 2021 Sir Richard Williams Scholar and today I will be sharing with you lessons I've learned throughout my PhD candidature um, in innovation and technology and what to do when sometimes things don't go right. So firstly, what is a swarm? Well, a swarm is a team of agents who act synchronously to provide a coordinated effect. As a team, the agents will coordinate based on both internal and external direction, but the outcome will be towards a coordinated effect. Nature offers multiple examples of swarms, such as flocks of birds, schools of fish, or mobs of sheep. These swarms often appear homogenous, Non-homogeneous examples can be considered platform diversity, such as this particular slide, um, where it's a complex battle space with different agents teaming together towards a coordinated outcome. Given our battle space is becoming more congested, contested and complex, it is important for our understanding of capability to evolve from 1v1 to multiple agents coordinating to achieve different outcomes. Consequently, by understanding swarming behaviours, it offers us an insight on how to influence the battle space and achieve our desired effects. So I'd like to begin by talking about some swarming models. So in my research proposal, I declared I was going to develop influence and behaviour shaping of swarms. So I started with my initial literature review and looked at various swarming models, including Reynolds Boyd's model to emulate flocking behaviour for gaming, and Strombaum shepherding model, which uses elements of Reynolds Boyd's model, um, but is applied in the shepherding context. So while Reynolds' model enabled the simulation of the swarming behaviour, Strombaum's model e emulated the sheep mustering task using a single sheepdog. What was similar about these models is that they had swarming agents that were parameterised the same. So each agent within the swarm was considered homogenous. However, when I decided to research the agent that they chose, i.e. the sheep, it became apparent that sheep are not homogenous. Sheep will respond to novel stimuli based on uh, their personality. And therefore, a mob of sheep is heterogeneous at the agent level. And so this is where I changed my uh, motivation from behaviour shaping and influencing of swarms to influencing of cognitive swarms. And so that is where Sky Shepherds began. So Sky Shepherds research explores the full system of the shepherding problem from the impact of introducing alternate technology to the, to the environment through to how the agents actually respond to that technology, as well as how to make it so that the farmer can interact with that swarm through technology. So to develop farmer and sky shepherd teaming, um, we wanted to go from a user operates the system through to a users are the system. This is elements of human systems engineering. So the phases pertain to the level of computational intelligence that exists in the meaningful human autonomy, socio-technical relationships between the controlling agent and the sky shepherd. So that is M hat one in this figure here. So what we um, actually see though is a system of systems effect where the farmer is uh, the, the commander of M hat one. So M hat one needs to take direction from the commander, the farmer, 
uh, to achieve the, the overall effect. So the phases that have been completed as part of my research are phase one in 2019, which we will talk about, uh, uh, phase zero, sorry, and phase one in 2021. So to realise the future phases, we will need to actually look at developing machine education curriculums based on improved swarm models. So phase zero was the screening test to measure the initial hypothesis of how well a swarm of cognitive agents respond to a new herding agent in the system, where our swarm of cognitive agents were dorper sheep, um, and we'll talk a bit about why that's important later. Um, and the herding agent was a commercial drone, in particular the Mavic Enterprise Duo. So what we did is we looked at how a small flock of dorpers will respond. So the, the flock sizes were three, five and seven, so very small examples of flocks. Uh, and we exposed them to different sounds. As a result of our testing, um, which we used high throughput testing, so we only had to conduct three rounds of 18 tests as opposed to over a thousand, uh, we found that you could, you needed to make the dorpers aware of your presence using an alert siren, and then to continue that driving action using a dog barking sound. Now, when we used uh, the motorbike sounds, the, we lost control of the flock uh, that also happened when we used the Imperial March. So I do not recommend playing Star Wars to sheep. <laughs> so uh, as a result of our research, we tried to combine all of the data sources that we had. Um, as you can see here, they didn't exactly align. This is one of those challenges of when you combine multiple commercial data sources and try and understand what's going on in the environment. I'm sure there's plenty of you out there who can feel that pain. So the post-processing took us a very long time, uh, but that's okay. Uh, we continued on and we did part two of the testing where we went, okay, while the sheep do respond to just the drone, we need to augment the drone with sound. We need to actually acknowledge that sheep have more than one sensor, so let's actually harness their oral and visual sensors. And so off we went back out into the fray, so to speak. Um, so what we did is we used uh, some results. We, um, we did get a very limited result because we flew our drone into a tree and destroyed it. So again, this is part of innovation and trying to learn how do you actually control it. And because we were using uh, a human pilot um, as opposed to the autonomy, autonomy that exists on the Mavic, um, it, it does, it's very hard with a Mac 1 eyeball to see a tree from a very long distance away. That's all I will say. So I'll stand up for my pilots there. Um, what we had, did find, however, was that there was this influence that was occurring within the swarm, and we call this the center of influence. There is synchronicity that occurs, which we can measure using transfer entropy, so information theoretic responses. Um, and we also harness the fact that sheep have personality and they respond based on their behavior, their in innate behaviors. So they, they will conduct a risk assessment and determine whether or not you are a predator. That is what they do. So we said, is there predation risk happening? How are they harnessing this situational awareness? And therefore, what is the leadership that exists in order to drive the flock to their particular goal? And so this is where the center of influence came into effect. So then we went on to uh, phase one testing. This is when we built our own drone. So this is, um, you can see myself and one of our collaborators, Bruce, holding Sky Shepherd One. Sarge, the sheepdog, who was very gracious. And what we were actually seeking to answer is, could the uh, purpose-built drone uh, effectively herd a, or muster a swarm of sheep? Um, better than a well-trained sheepdog. And there's an important aspect there as well. The sheepdog is known to the sheep 
and the Sky Shepherd is novel. So we were anticipating that we would see some difference in personalities occurring as well. So what did we have? Well, first of all, phase one testing was really only possible because of the sponsorship we received from the Williams Foundation. As I showed you earlier, when we had multiple different commercial sets being put together, it was a nightmare. Thanks to the Williams Foundation, we were able to purchase a, a fully designed system that allowed us to have um, smart sheep in a way. Um, hope, I'm not sure if you can see, but they, each of them have a smartphone on their collar um, and they also have a heart rate monitor. So they have, they're a bit like us, you know, that we've got Fitbits to measure our heart rate so we can measure the physiological response to the drone, um, as well as we can use their physical sensors that are available on the smartphone, so in particular GPS accelerometer. Um, so that we can understand where their position is and whether or not they are, their stress response, their physiological response is due to them simply running, the accelerometer will tell us that, or because of the fact that we are exposing them to a herding agent. And by knowing which one it is, we can then make an assessment of whether or not it is the drone or the sheepdog that is having the, the most desired effect. What we did find was that while these um, the Sky Shepherd was effective at influencing the, the swarm of sheep. It was not significantly lower stress than using a traditional sheepdog. So Sky Shepherd 1, while it's good, it's not yet the most lower stress. I'd also like to um, acknowledge our pilots who did a really great job of um, herding these sheep. Um, and we had two. So Sky Shepherd 1 and Sky Shepherd 2. Sky Shepherd 2 was attacked and downed by a crow and so never completed the experiments. Um, thankfully, the crow was not hurt. Sky Shepherd 2, however, was not salvaged until after the experiments. So what are some of the lessons that we learn? Um, well, first of all, testing is important to answering questions. That is the biggest thing. To answer questions, we need to be curious. So keep being curious. By, uh, innovation isn't always about finding the right answer. Often it's about finding the ways not to do something so you can innovate. So that is the big thing. Um, if I welcome any questions, thank you. How do you assess whether the, um, the sheep have identified as a predator or not? So one of the ways to look at whether or not a sheep considers you a predator is how they initially respond. So if they um, feel a threat, they will flee. If they are more curious, they will pause and assess what you are exactly. Um, with, a, with our Sky Shepherd, there was more of a pause and assess um, as opposed to with the, the sheepdog. Um, so if a sheepdog is initially introduced to a flock of sheep who've never seen it, they will respond with flee whereas there is a significant amount of learning and education in the shepherding system so that both the sheep and the sheepdog learn how to actually conduct the mustering task. Um, thank you. So finally, a question from our app. So the question by Anonymous is, can machine learning be used to study or learn the sheep behavior? Uh, so I will say yes, but I prefer the term of machine education. Machine learning often means that you do something once with some sort of reinforcement aspect. What you want to do is actually have some sort of curriculum involved. So by having a curriculum, you can actually assess whether or not your reinforcement function is actually effective. You also need to be able to recognise the fact that um, mustering is a dynamic task, it doesn't just have a single goal point, it is going to vary around the battle space, so to speak, which is the farm. Therefore, you need to be able to train your system to not only recognise the behaviour and response of the sheep, but also how to navigate the system that it's involved in. All right, I guess with that, I would like to say thank you very much. Um, amazing PhD, I think you've completed, right? No, no? writing. All right, writing. <laughs> so um, um, 
my best of luck to finishing this awesome piece of work up. Um, and with that, I would like to close this session. So thank you very much, everyone. <laughs>